And today I thought I would share with you how a random event in my life uh, led me to quit the comfortable life in the corporate world and uh, led me to create my company. And uh, I want to share some of the learnings in uh, moving from, uh, from a startup to uh, enterprise and to, to real company. Um, so it all started about four years ago. I was uh, living a comfortable life in Seattle. I spent uh, over uh, 13 years working with Microsoft first, and then uh, over the last couple of years, I, I, I started working on a very cool project at Amazon called Amazon Go. And uh, unfortunately, for a uh, personal reason, my wife had to leave the, the States with my two kids. Uh, and so in the next two years, I would see my family like once a year when I was lucky. So the parents in the room can understand how difficult that was. And so what happened one of the weekends I was uh, in Seattle, I started thinking about building this amazing toy for uh, one of my son. And the goal was to build something really cool so you know I could put a big smile on, on his face. And uh, so the idea was basically uh, something like that. So I wanted to build a like, teddy bear that I could train with uh, you know, content that I knew my son would like, like Finding Nemo and, and Pixar movies out there. And so the project has two components, a software components and a hardware component. The software components were essentially a couple of neural networks that I wanted to train with uh, you know, movie scripts and, and Disney content that I could f easily find all, online. And so the first neural network was a, a classic encoder decoder that I, that I would train with the scripts that I could uh, find online. And then I had uh, like something that I, I took pre-made, which was essentially like a, a sentiment analysis neural network. I think it was an RNN. And so I built these two things. I exposed through uh, a web service. I slapped it on AWS. And that was my software side of the teddy bear. And the idea is that the, the encoder, the coder, would capture the question. It would answer based on the scripts that it learned uh, over time. And then the sentiment analysis neural network would transform uh, the question into an RGB uh, uh, triple. And essentially, that would correspond the color of a LED that I would uh, turn on. On the hardware side, I had uh, essentially a Raspberry Pi 2 with an Arduino component uh, with a microphone and a speaker. And the Raspberry Pi 2 had, had a simple client which would take the audio from my kid, send it to the Google API to turn that into text. I would take the text, send it to the AWS service that they built, and I would get a response back. I would take the response back and turn that into an audio file. And that was essentially the teddy bear voice. And the small lead would correspond to how happy or unhappy was the teddy bear based on, uh, on the question that would come in. So after a few months of playing around, I come up with this. So mind this was never meant to be serious. Now, since then, we move off. I moved off our toys. Uh, this was like a, you know, a funny exercise I did. But uh, I then realized perhaps I could talk to companies and, and ingest their data. And, and instead of building a teddy bear, I could actually build a chatbot that could uh, you know, help on specific tasks like custom support. And, uh, and so I started making a few phone calls. And uh, two years ago, I, I essentially quit my, my job and I moved back to the, to, from the States. And, uh, uh, you know, and uh, Two years uh, since then. Now, oops, sorry. Now we are 14 people. Uh, we have an office here in Barcelona and one in London. Uh, I raised two millions uh, since I started the company. Uh, we have uh, the majority of us coming from uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. That's sort of the DNA of the company. And we're lucky enough to be able to work with Fortune 500 enterprises around the, around the world. And uh, and uh, so this has been a, like a great adventure so far. Uh, and by the way, we are hiring. So if they're like a uh, researcher, like junior researcher, or people interested in machine translation, NLP, please uh, come and talk to me. We're always on the lookout for uh, great, great people. And uh, we're also hiring salespeople. And I'm not sure there are anyone in the room, but we're looking for salespeople as well. Now, what was the issue with my uh, original toy? Uh, if you look at real use case scenarios with chatbots, you end up, uh, usually you end up something like that. So you have a multi-turn conversation, and the chatbot usually needs to 
guide you through a step-by-step -step discussion, and it needs to gather some information from you so it could eventually execute some business logic. So if you're booking a hotel, the chatbot will want to know where you want to go, when you want to check in, et cetera, et cetera. And you can imagine that with uh, like a simple architecture like that, it would have been really hard to uh, come up with a conversation that was coherent, uh, uh, to say at least, and tracking you know, the dialogue through each step would have been really hard. So the first thing we had to do was to create some sort of state machine around this encoder decoder in a way that would essentially let, uh, help the system guide you through these specific tasks. Uh, and the other problem which we uh, um, discovered uh, uh, soon is that running this type of architecture can be very expensive, especially if you're a startup. If you're looking to save dime on a dime, then this could burn a lot of C G GPU cycles. And, and so we had to uh, think of a ways to reduce the you know, number of, of G, you know, training or number of GPU cycles we'll burn uh, to save a bit of money. The other problem we had uh, that we discovered when we start moving to a real company is that the training data that you typically uh, come across when you work with companies doesn't look anywhere like the one that you might using uh, in research, for example. Uh, sometimes the training set is not even there in the first place. Uh, so we, we were working with a, a bank uh, in Italy and th there's no data for the things they need to do. Sometimes it, there's a lot of data, but it's, it's so unclean that for practical use, it's, it's really hard to use it. And so whatever solution you have to come up with, we have to be able to be uh, conscious that the data that you would see in, in, in our space would be very different depending on the use case. And in some cases, it's not even enough to think about neural network for training. And so that's the second thing we have to uh, consider. Um, the third thing, and it was a bit of unexpected for me, was that uh, as you start building these chatbots for companies, you realize that building this technology, it becomes really an art uh, more than a technical problem. Because really, you're, you're turning yourself into a user experience uh, person. Because it's not just uh, a technical issue, but you're really designing a way for people to interact with, with the machine. And so, when you build a company, you have to think about how do you inject this type of behavior and, and component into your team. And I think ultimately, these are sort of the, the first three takeaways that I got in the first couple of years that we have uh, run in a company. And there are like two um, main issues that we're focusing on right now. The first one uh, is uh, around training uh, chatbots with unstructured data. Because what it's limiting this technology right now is the fact that you have to have humans in between the system that you're designing and the system that you want to design. So the moment you have people trying to start mingling with these intents and entities, then it's the moment where, you're, where you, uh, you know, make your process unscalable. And now we're focusing on uh, building uh, mechanisms so enterprises could come and, and, and ditch you know, you know, PDFs and, and text files and whatever and help them at least start training chatbots uh, in this way. And the second problem, which is more, I think, for, for us as a startup to solve, is, is uh, creating some sort of open ecosystem. Uh, because uh, as you start building chatbots for different companies, you realize that there are a lot of components that are similar. And so there is no reason why there shouldn't be some sort of common library or, or some way to interoperate across chatbots. And that's the other thing we're pushing as a, as a company. Um, and I know there's been a lot of uh, you know, uh, chat about uh, AI coming to take jobs and all of that fun stuff. But uh, uh, and, 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 no, we do take it very seriously. But if you, if you have where to plot the GDP uh, uh, historically, you'll see there's a big spike around uh, uh, the late 1700s, beginning 1800s. And that has to do with uh, the Industrial Revolution. And the Industrial Revolution was the moment where human uh, hand off manual labor to machines. And I think we're now on the cusp of, of uh, witnessing the moment where we're going to start handing off to machines, you know, uh, work that require uh, your, uh, you know, require your brain. And it could be, uh, you know, it could be intimidating at times, but I think it will help us refocus uh, our place in the workplace. And uh, I feel that it's very exciting, and uh, you know, I hope that's exciting for you as well. Okay, perfect. Let's talk about that. But I'm, I'm curious to know, um, that, you know, you're referring to the fact that you would use our uh, unlabeled data, or I think there's going to be a presentation on that.
that later. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the case of the, 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 the uh, slide, you showed a, a mobile phone, yeah. kind of natural language. But in the case of creating a technical support chatbot with, you know, you would need like a subject matter expert. Is it realistic that you'd be able to even collect data sheets, technical documentation, and the like from the company in order to, to, to train it sufficiently without yeah, a we, human intervention? Yeah, we're actually doing that for like um, a telco company. Uh, they have, um, as a matter of fact, they have uh, like a, a number of uh, material they use for the customers for, which is like Excel spreadsheets and, and so forth. Um, but the effort to take that in and make it into production is quite, it's quite big. And so what we're trying to do is, is come up with something which is a bit more generic. Um, you have to put a lot of effort, unfortunately, into that. Uh, but it's, uh, it's definitely something you can do if you work closely with enterprise. The, unfortunately, that doesn't scale very well. And so what we're trying to do is understand if, if there is some way for uh, educating companies on how to structure the data uh, in a way that could be used. What's your company called, by the way? Pactera. Pactera. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for the talk. Um, I, I've got two questions, really. One, the first one is I do a bunch of advisory work for very large companies, and I get 100 emails a week from chatbot providers. So my question is, how, do you, how have you managed to cut through the noise to sell chatbot? The second one is chatbot as a platform is very general, but mm -hmm. I, when you go to each customer, you're being asked to implement for very specific use cases. How have you managed to balance your product strategy to work between those two spaces? Yeah, so let me answer uh, those two questions. are really interesting. So the first one is, uh, is that um, uh, how do we manage to sell this thing to customer? Um, I think um, when we talk to enterprises, we bring a lot of past expertise in this area. So a bunch of us have been doing this for a large company for, for a number of years. And, and so you are able to establish uh, like a, a more direct and trustworthy conversation with enterprises. Like uh, I come from the enterprise world, pretty much my entire team come from the enterprise world. And that gives you an advantage in understanding you know, the dynamics that plays into an enterprise and uh, it, it understands you what's the timing with enterprises and what are the requirements and the quality of the software we need to ship. So I think that could help us a little bit uh, just because we're part of their world. Um, and also, we, um, you know, we have been fortunate enough uh, so far in, in, in the fact that we've been growing organically. So a lot, of, a lot of the clients that we have is because you know, I work with you and you tell someone else. And, and that brings a bit of trust as well that perhaps other company hasn't been able to do. As for the platform, you're right, there's a lot of people out there. Uh, when I started the company, I certainly, I should have probably, but I certainly look at what was the best uh, possible field to be in. It's just something I had passion on. But what we're doing is uh, building a platform play, but it's going to be specific to uh, three use cases, three, four use cases. And so we are pushing the platform into be a sort of, if you want it, like a, a very horizontal or, or a vertical platform. So it's going to be horizontal, but vertical to a few specific use cases. And that's a way for us to stand up from competition as well. Um, in terms of uh, technology, how do you stay on top of everything that's happening with uh, natural language processing at the moment? And secondly, um, there's been a lot of chatbots that, in at least in the public opinion, that seem to be failed because we had too high expectations. Yep. Um, the expectations that people have today, when do you think that they always will actually be uh, coming to fruition, that you can have more of that one-on-one -on -one conversation that you can with a human? Yeah. So. The way we keep up with competition, and uh, it's you know, and for the most part, we uh, make sure we listen to customers a lot, uh, and uh, we actively listen to, to the customers. And when when we work with the enterprise we work with, uh, we spend quite a lot of time f understanding what is that they need to be successful. And I think that leads uh, sort of another progression of the product. Uh, we don't obviously we have uh, our eyes on all the major players, but. We are too small to, to be able to play that kind of game. And so our, our uh, philosophy is let, let's make sure that we understand how do we make customer A, B, and C successful. And that drives uh, the work that we do. 
and the other thing we also make sure we do when we work with that with companies is make sure that they understand these are really just tools to achieve a specific uh, uh, ends so we're not building your friend we're not building your girlfriend these are like very uh, specific tools that will work well if uh, if immersed in a very specific environment so there is a uh, a period of education between us and the clients uh, because we don't want to set the false expectation because otherwise this whole industry will fail. It, it could end up being what voice recognition was like 10 years ago, not even. Let's give a big applause. Thank you.